Hi, and welcome to Prepping Essentials. All preppers know that food is one of the three critical things that you must have in order to survive. But sometimes preppers struggle knowing what foods to put into their long-term food storage. It's quite a complicated issue as food comes in all different sizes and weights and shelf lives. But what if I told you there was one food which you can make yourself? It's very easy to make, it's very cheap to make, and it will last pretty much your lifetime. Would you like to know what it is? Let's find out. Bread has been one of mankind's more important basic staple foodstuffs for many centuries. Bread supplies a significant proportion of the nutrients required for growth and the maintenance of health and well-being. It's an excellent source of protein, vitamins, minerals, fibre and carbohydrates, and it's also low in fat and cholesterol. Bread's quite bulky, so it takes longer to digest and is more satisfying and keeps hunger at bay for longer. During normal day-to-day -day living in our towns and cities, bread is a reliable food staple for daily diets. However, when travelling over large distances or when living in more remote areas with an unreliable supply chain, bread can no longer be viewed as a reliable food source. This is because fresh bread has a very short shelf life and also because the main raw material needed to produce it, the wheat, is both bulky and highly susceptible to climate and pests. Over the last few centuries, as nations sent out their people to explore or conquer distant lands, the need to find a bread substitute which could survive long journeys and which was easily transportable grew and eventually a solution was found. It's made from the same basic ingredients as bread, but it's overcooked to form small crackers or biscuits rather than the traditional bread loaf. It's known in a variety of names, including ship's biscuits or hard bread, but in modern times it's generally known as hardtack biscuits. And that's the subject of today's video, how to make hardtack biscuits. Okay, so you don't actually need a great deal for this. Um, I'm guessing that uh, most people will probably have all of the things that's on the list. Uh, but I'll run through them just in case. Um, big mixing bowl, uh, measuring jug, flour, water, salt, a few utensils, rolling pin, knife, fork, spoon and a spatula. Pretty basic really. Um, so if you get all those things together and we'll see what we need to do with them. Okay, so we're in the kitchen. We've got all the things that we need. We've got our utensils and uh, ingredients. Start off with uh, a mixing bowl. Very, very simple recipe. We're talking about plain white whole grain flour. You can use general purpose flour or you can use uh, bread flour. It's entirely up to you, doesn't really matter. We've got some salt and we've got some water. In terms of uh, quantities, we have two cups of the flour and one cup of the water. Quick tip here, it is a two to one recipe, so if you don't have a measuring jug with all the gradients marked out, top tip, get yourself a set of glasses that are of the same size and simply one glass water equal size, two glasses of the flour. Very simple two to one ratio. Salt is one teaspoonful. And we'll stick that in in a second. So with the mixing jug, very, very simply, we're pouring the flour into the mixing jug. Pop that out of the way. Just grab a pair of scissors to 
open up the salt. It is literally a teaspoon of the salt. Again, in terms of ingredients, you can mix and match to suit your own personal taste. If you like it a little bit more salty, then crack on, put some more in. If you don't want any salt at all, then don't put any in. But it does help uh, to preserve the actual biscuit once you're finished. So we'll just mix that in, get the salt in with the flour. Your fork, I generally find, is very, very easy. You can get those whisks, but to be honest, why spend the money when you don't really need it? Just an average fork will do. So mix that around nicely. And then bit by bit, we're going to simply add the water. Not exactly the most exciting of videos that I've done. Just mixing flour, salt and water in a bowl. Um, I might choose to edit this um, and speed things up a little bit for you in the final video. I might not, we'll see how we get on. Um, some people might actually find it a little bit relaxing just sat watching somebody else doing the cooking for a change, who knows. You can see that's starting to bind together quite nicely. And as we gradually add the water, all that flour that's around the edge of the bowl should start to get sucked into the mixture. You're looking for a dough constituency, a consistency that is still a little bit sticky. As I said, it's not an exact science this. We might need to add flour or water as we go along. If we overdo it, get it too runny, we'll add the flour. If it's a little bit too dry and the flour has not been mixed in, then we'll add a little bit more water. But to be honest, this is coming along quite nicely and I don't think I'm going to have to uh, add anything at all. It is binding together quite nicely into a solid dough ball. You can see that in the video. Um, that's the kind of thing that you're looking for. You want it to be one big lump but still a little bit sticky, not too dry. And I think, to be honest, we're about there, if you can see that. So I've got a plastic spatula. You can use plastic, silicon, uh, wood, whatever your preference is. I just find that these plastic ones do actually clean up quite well. And when it comes to getting the dough out of the bowl, I think you'll probably find that a plastic spatula like this is actually a little bit more beneficial. So I'll drag across the board to roll it out, normal wooden rolling pin. We are going to need some flour on the board to stop that dough from sticking once we take it out of the bowl. So I'll just dust that off and spread that around. Time to get down and dirty with the hands. We can't really use anything else but our hands for this part. Um, so if you do wear jewellery then do take it off because it will get underneath the jewellery and you'll find days later that you're still trying to pick bits out. Same with your fingernails. So nice clean hands, no jewellery and we'll get this on the board. So just scrape around the bowl with the spatula. As you can see it is coming out quite nicely. And then we're just going to simply pour it out onto the board you can see what I mean now about the spatula it is uh, very good just pop that out the way spread a little bit of flour onto here in fact I'll keep that spatula for a second again rather than using the hands and getting them all sticky in the initial stages I can just use the spatula to move this around on the board and work in a little bit more flour just to get it moving 
can't do this all the time of course we are going to have to get in with the hands but sticky dough like this once it's on your fingers uh, if they're not floured up it will go everywhere so here we go let's get down into it and just move it around we don't need to actually knead this dough don't need to knead it bit of a pun there um, all we're doing is moving it around on the board just to try and work a bit of flour in to stop it sticking now when I roll this out I don't have a huge board to work with so I think what I'll do is I'll split this in half now and I can come back to the other half a little bit later once I've shown you on the board what it is that I'm doing. So the objective is to make this rolled out into a thickness of around uh, an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch in diameter. So not very thick at all. The purpose of it is to get in the oven and not be too thick so that it doesn't dry out completely. We're looking for the least, least, least amount of moisture in the biscuit that we can have and that's what helps to make it a lifetime food. All the air out of it and it's not going to go bad when you put it into storage. When we're rolling this out we're trying to get roughly a rectangle shape. The only reason for that is it makes it easier to cut into rectangular shaped biscuits rather than having lots of corner bits because it's round rather than rectangle shaped. But that's looking okay now. I think we're pretty much there in terms of thickness. As I say, eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. Certainly you don't want it more than a quarter of an inch or it's not going to dry out properly in the oven. Talking about ovens, that noise in the background, that whirring noise, that is the oven. The oven's already on preheating to 175 degrees. Um, and we're going to have that in there for an hour, flip the biscuits over and pop it back in for another hour. So total time, two hours at 175. Um, depending on what kind of oven you have, if it's fan assisted or not fan assisted, the actual baking time will vary slightly. Um, but by looking at the biscuit, you'll be able to gauge. You don't want it to be, certainly don't want it burning. It wants to be a golden brown colour, uh, no darker than that. So that's that bit. All we need to do now is to cut it up into strips. You can use whatever you want for that, a knife or a pizza cutter would actually be better. I don't have one so I've got a smooth blade edge knife long enough to get it cut up. Um, and I'll do that in a second. I'm just going to quickly stop the video so that uh, I can work on this other part as well. Okay, so <clears throat> this is what we're looking for. We're looking for biscuit sized, inch and a half or so thereabouts, uh, rectangles. Separate them out and then grow our fork. You could use a chopstick, you could use a toothpick, whatever you think. And then just put some, stab the biscuits to put some holes in them. You're trying to go all the way through to the other side. You're not just pricking the surface. The objective is, as I said earlier, to try and get air into the biscuit so that it dries out thoroughly.
if you were uh, so inclined, you could do little designs on here, wherever you fancy. So we're just pricking as far through as we can get, turn them over just to have a little look. You can see that we've come through if you do feel the necessity, necessary to just poke the odd one out. But let's just check that they're all done and they all seem to be all the way through. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that, that they are actually all going right through to the other side. Yeah. Yeah, you can see that they've all gone right through to the other side. So we've preheated the oven to 175 degrees. We're going to pop those onto a big tray. Again, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. You can just use a flat tray like this. If you do have a, a rack to sit on the top, you can use that as well. But uh, you're simply putting them onto the tray to go into the oven. Now, I've done this in two halves, so clearly I'm going to have to do the other half as well. So again, rather than you getting bored rigid, I'll quickly go ahead and do that and we'll get them banged in the oven. Just a quick update on the uh, Artac biscuits. You can see it's at 175. It's actually been in there now for around about 45 minutes. This is a fan assisted oven. As I open up there, you can see that they are starting to brown off nicely. I'll probably give them another five, 10 minutes tops, turn them over and then pop those in for another hour to finish off the other side. So the hard tack biscuits are out of the oven. As you can see, they're all done. Um, do bear in mind with these, these are long-term survival rations rather than everyday food rations. They are extremely hard and crispy. Back in the day when uh, these were survival rations for sailors or for soldiers, the only way really that they could eat these without breaking their teeth was to have them in soup and just let them soak in the soup until they became soft enough to chew on. Um, other things that they might have done would be to actually grind these down into the soup to bulk it out. Um, please do not try just chewing on these as they are, as I said, they are a survival ration uh, rather than every day. Much better take a look at my flatbed recipe and have flatbread, uh, which is essentially the same ingredients with your soup, rather than trying to chew on these. Um, leave it in there for a few minutes. It will eventually soften up. Um, but as I say, please do be careful with these. They are extremely crispy, and they're supposed to be. So when you've cooked them up, get them into an airtight container or a Ziploc bag or whatever. Maybe some oxygen absorbers if you're going to put them into a, a big container, such as a biscuit barrel or whatever. But there we go. Hard tack biscuits, long-term survival food that will definitely outlive you. As I was making the uh, hard tack biscuit video and uh, kneading out the dough, it occurred to me that uh, I could do a little bonus video at the end uh, because the same dough that you use to make the hard tack biscuits can also be used to make something called flat bread. And I mentioned it when I was uh, dipping the biscuits in the soup at the end of the video. So flat bread is an Arabic or Asian type of bread. 
if you have ever been for a curry and seen a naan bread, same kind of thing, just a little bit thinner um, and it's unleavened bread. So here we go, a little bonus video to show you how to make flat bread. And next time you have your soup, instead of using hard pack biscuits, you can use this flat bread instead. So I'm, I'm gradually cutting the, uh, the dough up and just forming it into little kind of golf ball sized balls. Some are a bit bigger than others, but um, it's not going to make a huge difference. And the objective is that once we've got a little balls of dough, we'll then roll those out. Just cut that one a little bit more. We'll cut roll those out <coughs> into small breads ready for cooking. And I've ended up there with <clears throat> two, four, six, eight, ten of these little balls. So we'll just take those to one side, just pop them back in there for a second. And literally all we're doing is we're going to roll those out to make the little round breads. Ready for cooking. Bear in mind we are doing these very thinly. It's not like um, making the hard type biscuits that we did in the other video. These are and if you've had Arabic or flat breads before, but they're certainly less than an eighth of an inch. You can see that. But they're ready to go. So we'll do the same with the others. And then we can get cooking. So we've made up the, uh, the dough balls and roll those out into bread sized portions. I've just got a pan on the cooker here, um, normal frying pan. There's no oil or fat or anything in the pan. I'm just heating up so it gets super hot. I'll just test and see. Yeah, you can see that uh, when I drop some water on there, it instantly starts bubbling away. So we know that that's at the correct temperature. So we'll just take one of our one of our breads and we'll just drop that into the pan and just let it sit there just move it around a little bit we'll just give it a minute literally to uh, warm up on that bottom side let it seal As I say, there's nothing in the pan, no oil or fat or anything, it's just literally the pan. You can see it's starting to smoke there. Just have a little look. Yep, tip that over. You can see it did start to brown there. Same thing on this side. Just move it around a little bit. Literally a minute is all it takes. Pull on off. Quick look. Yep, yeah, you, can, you can see that side's done as well. You can even see the bread there is rising up as the, uh, the centre of it starts to puff out a little bit and separate which is what we want. We want it to be a little bit crispy on the outside but still soft in the middle and I think that that's pretty much there. 
I'm just doing this as an example for you so if you can see one of them but there's the bread and you can see if I tear it open it's still nice and soft in the center but it is crispy on the outside in fact it's very hot it's burning my fingers but there we go mmm that is actually quite nice you can do with it what you want with these in terms of what you want to have on them a little bit of garlic butter perhaps or something sweeter some jam or some honey it is very tasty actually so there we go some simple flatbread as I said at the start of the video, uh, bread in all its forms is uh, a staple in our diet and it's something that people do enjoy. Perhaps not the hardtack, but certainly the flat bread and other breads. So why not have a little experiment and see what you can make? Um, if you would like to see uh, a video on the more traditional bread, it's perhaps something I could do at some point. If you'd like to do that, then just leave a comment in the comment section. But have a go, see what you can do, and you'd be surprised, I think, at what you can achieve with very little ingredients and not a great deal of time. Well, that's it for this video. I hope that you found something in there that was of use to you. If you did like the video, then please do click on the like button and also feel free to hit the subscribe button. As always, welcome any comments or questions or suggestions that you might have please feel free to leave those in the comment section below. But for now, thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the future videos.